Hello, I'm Gary Fatinos. I'm the manager at Redland City Council. I've been involved in the mosquito management program for over 20 years. And that includes dealing with biting midge. The, the program is based on science, there's monitoring, there's surveillance, there's partnerships that we develop with local councils, neighbouring councils, and with research institutions as well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Darbro. I'm a medical entomologist for QIMR Berghofer Medical Research Institute. Biting midges are small insects that, uh, that can bite people and be pests. The ones in redlands tend to grow in mud in uh, uh, coastal areas such as mangrove swamps. Then the adult uh, midges, the ones that fly, can fly uh, quite a distance from those areas, up to a kilometer or so. Uh, to control biting midges, we have a, a lot of limitations that, uh, compared to, say, controlling mosquitoes. Uh, for instance, uh, to control mosquitoes, we can target the immature stages, which is a lot more efficient. We have environmentally friendly insecticides to do that. The problem is, those environmentally friendly insecticides don't work against immature midges. Uh, so all we, have, all, we, all we have available are more toxic insecticides, which we can't apply to the natural environments where the midges live. They would kill not just the uh, midge larvae, but other, other insects or, um, in, in some cases, uh, other, other life forms that are living in the natural habitat. Since they're very small, they, uh, they don't like wind. So actually, if you can use a, if you use a fan, a fan will help uh, keep midges away. Also, the midges uh, avoid the, the middle of the day when it's more warm. So if you can avoid uh, being outside in the early morning or late afternoon, uh, those two times are when midges are most prevalent and most biting. Uh, and you especially don't want to be uh, uh, doing things with water, like gardening or washing your car. Uh, those are other things that attract midges. Uh, midges like to rest in, in low-lying vegetation, so keeping your lawn mowed and trying to avoid that sort of low, dense foliage in your yard will reduce the numbers of midges. Midges are small enough that they can actually get through some fly screens that you could put on doors and windows, but you can get around that by spraying insecticide like what you can get at the store onto screens, and, and that will stop midges. Um, and if eventually the insecticide will wear off, and if the midges start getting through again, you can just reapply. And finally, the, uh, a lot of the, the tactics you can use against mosquitoes work against midges, like wearing long sleeves, long pants, uh, using repellents. Unfortunately, with biting midge, it's really difficult. Unlike mosquitoes, we know where they are, we can count them, we can identify them, we have some products that we can actually apply to their control when they're in the larval stage. With biting midge, we just can't do that. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is make sure that we maintain a program that uh, looks after the environment and protects the, uh, the people from a public health issue. The good news is that midges do not transmit any diseases to humans in Australia.